Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. In today's video, I'm going to be building a piece of furniture for my home. Now, quick bit of background. I live in a smaller flat and it's open space plan. So there's no clear divide between the dining area and the living room side. So that's what I'm going to be building today. I'm going to be building a piece of furniture that's going to be equally relevant for both spaces while clearly dividing both spaces and keeping that open feel to my space. I've actually been trying to find a piece of furniture to suit this purpose for quite some time now, unsuccessfully. Everything that I've seen out there has not been the right dimensions, or if it is the right dimension, it just hasn't been the right style for my space. I've actually grown quite restless to try to find this perfect piece, so I decided to design it and build it myself. I've designed this piece to be double-sided, modular, and multifunctional. It's gonna be a mix between a credenza, a display cabinet, a side table, and a buffet table. So it's gonna be all these things mashed up into one. For the dining area, it's gonna be made to look more like a china cabinet. And this is where I plan to store all of my china and silverware and all of the items that I need for dinner service. And the countertops I'll be able to use for buffets. So if I ever host Sunday brunches or Thanksgiving dinners or these types of events, it'll work well for that. And then on the living room side, I plan to have uh, wood panel doors with heavy hardware to give it more of that robust look to make it look more like a credenza. I'm excited to get started on this project and I'm excited to share the process with you guys. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I did was I created a blueprint of my design with diagrams and very specific measurements, which I then printed out and referred to throughout the build. Because I was dealing with rudimentary rectangular shapes, I had all of the wood panels pre-cut at my local hardware store before getting started. Once I had all of the pieces and the plan in place, it was time to begin. The first step was to mark all of the groove tracks on all of the pieces of the frame. Each panel piece of the frame have a total of four groove tracks, two on each side. I opted to use four millimeters thick wood panels for the sliding doors, so I made the width of the groove tracks six millimeters. This two millimeter give will allow the doors to slide smoothly while staying firmly in place. Although this design might seem simple to execute because of its basic rudimentary shape, it's actually quite complex because of its moving components. This means that position is crucial when marking placement points. Once I marked the placements of all of the groove tracks, I carved them out using a router and a 6mm drill bit. The depth of the grooves for the base and the side panels was 5 millimeters. For the countertop panel, it was 1.5 centimeter to allow for the insertion of the doors later on. After carving out all of the grooves, I filled a couple of knots on the wood using wood fill. After the wood fill dried, I sanded down all of the surfaces of the panels, top to bottom and front to back. I took my time with this step as I wanted to ensure a smooth finish. However, because I planned to stain the wood, I was careful not to over sand the wood so that the wood would absorb the stain later. Wood, like us, have pores, and if you over sand the wood, its pores will close, subsequently rejecting the treatment later. It's also important to sand inside the groove tracks so that the door slides smoothly. I got creative here and used a thin wood pallet and wrapped sandpaper around it to sand inside the crevices. 
I also sanded the sides to dull and slightly round off the edges. This will make the tracks less vulnerable to breaking in the future with use over time. After all of the panel pieces and their tracks were sanded, the next step of the process was to measure out and mark the joining points. Like many steps in this build, this particular step is very important. It's crucial to mark the joining points very precisely on each piece in order for them to connect properly later. Because I unfortunately do not have a drill press, I had to drill all of the holes for each joining point using a normal hand drill. When using a hand drill, it is very important to drill slow and steady. You want to make sure that you drill a perfectly straight vertical hole while not exceeding the necessary depth. After drilling, I sanded down the rims of the holes to remove any debris or splinters. So instead of drilling all of the joining points on all of the pieces, I just drilled the joining points on the base panel first. From these points, I used dowel pins to mark the placement of the joining points for the side panels of the frame. It was important to match the groove tracks of the base panel to the side panels perfectly before adding pressure to mark the placement of the joining points on the side panels. Once all of the tracks aligned perfectly, I added pressure to the side panels of the frame so that the dowel pins would clearly mark where I needed to drill the next set of joining points. I subsequently repeated this step until all joining points were marked on all of the pieces. After I marked and drilled all of the joining points, I added the wooden dowels and wood glue to build and bond the frame. I had to work quite fast when doing this step because I didn't want the glue to dry or get too tacky while I was building the frame. After I bonded and glued the frame, I made sure that everything was perfectly straight and everything was squared off. After that, I let it set and curate for 24 hours before moving on to the next step. While I waited for the wood glue to dry on the frame, I cut the shelves to size. I deliberately waited until this point of the process to work on the shelves to make sure that they were cut to the perfect length. I didn't want to risk cutting them too short beforehand. Once I cut the shelves to size, I sanded down all of the surfaces and dulled the edges, like I did with the frame pieces. After I sanded the shelves, I marked the placement of the brackets, drilled the holes, and installed them.
The next day, after the glue dried and the frame was perfectly bonded, I sanded down the sides of the frame at the joining points to remove any glue residue and to get perfectly smooth edges. Then I marked and drilled the screw holes for the shelves on the inner sides of the frame. I wanted a two-tone look, and I also wanted the natural grain of the wood to show through, so I opted to stain and oil the wood rather than paint it. I stained the outer part of the frame and the doors black, and for the shelves and the inner sides of the frame, I opted to keep the wood blonde and just oiled those parts using colorless oil. I wanted to avoid brush strokes on the surfaces, so I used dishwashing sponges to apply the stain and oil to get a smooth finish. Once all of the wood was treated and dried, I assembled all of the remaining pieces to get the final product. And there you have it. That's how I built my credenza slash display cabinet. So as you saw, the piece is quite versatile and because it is modular, it can be configured into many different permutations to suit my changing needs. For example, if I ever move into a new space, I can always opt to push it against the wall. And depending on my decor or my mood, I can always opt to have the wood panel doors showing in the forefront or the glass panel doors. I can also mix and match the panel doors and have one wood panel door and one glass panel door. I could also add or remove shelves depending on what I plan to store there over the years. So it's quite a versatile piece that can suit many different spaces. I have to say that I'm quite happy with the way that this piece came out, considering that this was the first time that I ever attempted to build a piece of furniture from start to finish. I should also mention that before I got started on this build, I did draw up very specific blueprints and diagrams with measurements of exactly what I wanted to achieve. I also did a lot of research, and in my research, I came across this guy's videos. His name is Andreas Colt. I'll link his videos down below. Andreas gives really good tips and tricks and things to consider when building a piece of furniture with sliding panel doors. So definitely check him out if you plan to build something like this for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and until next time, thanks for watching.